Welcome to the Glove Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Hope everyone is doing well. I hope the summer is treating you all splendidly. I mean, it is hot. It's hot here in Atlanta, so um, I don't know where you all may be listening from, but I feel like it's pretty hot all over like the world right now. So it's been a brutal summer, I should say. Like really hot, really humid. So (laughs) hopefully you're all listening to this episode in a very, very cool um, home or, you know, with AC. Speaking of ACs, uh, my AC has gone out. So I am without one AC in my house. Luckily, our upstairs unit is still pumping just fine. Um, But it also is pretty interesting. I mean, we haven't lived in our house that long, but I guess that poor AC has just been working super hard with these brutal um, Georgia summers because, whew, anywho. (laughs) So hopefully pretty soon here, I'll be back in it with, you know, some cool air coming through um, my downstairs portion of the house. So anywho, I digress, as you all know that I often do. (laughs) Anyway, I am excited today. We're talking all about um, a lot of great things. You know, we're gonna be talking about, you know, patience. Um, As an entrepreneur, we're gonna be talking about building a resilient mindset as an entrepreneur, and also really determining when it's time for you to take that leap of faith um, into full-time entrepreneur um, entrepreneurship. So um, I'll be joined today by Elisa Rose, who is the founder and designer at Sisu Athletics. Um, Elisa will be here and she's gonna share how she transitioned from career chaser to full-time entrepreneur, um, along with running you know, a successful boutique fitness studio for the past 10 years. Um, she's going to talk about um, how she took that leap of faith and tell us about Sisu Athletics, um, which is body inclusive apparel that supports and complements every unique curve of a woman and takes you from the boardroom to the gym and everything in between. Now, I love that. Um, and I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek that, guess what, ladies? Pockets. That's all I'm going to say. Because I love pockets. I don't know about you, but like, I love having pockets on dresses, on everything that I wear because I love to put my hands in them and also they're really good to like hold like things, you know, like your phone, your keys, things like that. So anyway, (laughs) I will be back in before you can like even blink. I will be back with Elisa, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra. All right. So now I am so excited to be back with you, Alyssa. So welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about our conversation today. Yes. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. But before we get down into all the goodness, why don't you tell everyone out there who you are and what you do? Awesome. I am Alisa Rose. And I don't like to label myself as a serial entrepreneur, but I think I'm going in that direction. (laughs) Um, My passion is just helping others, fulfilling a need in any capacity that I can, and always betting on myself and trying to walk in my purpose. Still discovering what that is, but as I discover tidbits, I'm walking in it. <laughs> awesome. So first of all, Alisa, I got you now, girl. So I'm good on that. Because I it, being a Kyra and someone calling me a Kira, I'm always <laughs> like so mindful of getting people's of pronouncing people's names correctly. So I'm sorry about that on the update. I'm so used um, to it. It's Alisa, Alicia, Alyssa. <laughs> if as long as it's close, I'll answer it. It's a Li Long E. Long E. There all you right. Go. So I love that you said, you know, you're walking, you're finding and walking in your purpose Mm because that is so important, right? Right. Okay. So before we get all into the business stuff, let's talk about like you getting to this place of saying, my purpose is to start my own business. How did, how did you get there? Because you were in corporate America. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, for many, many, many years, many, many different industries. And successful, like you were successful in your career in corporate America. mm -hmm. So, Oh, yeah, that took a lot of work. And I think it got to a point where I was tired of being a number. I was tired of not being valued or appreciated and seeing that no matter how much I showed up, that it wasn't reciprocated and it wasn't given back to me at the level or even close to the level that I was giving it. Mm -hmm. And it was just, I need to do more. I felt like I wasn't living a full life, that something was missing. So that was the initial click that there has to be something more. And I felt that for many years, but fear is what halted me or feeling like I wasn't worthy of more, that this was as good as it got. And I just got to a point where I was tired of it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to step out on faith. I'm going to bet on myself and we're going to see what's going to happen. If, if it didn't work, I always had a corporate career to go back to, but I had to at least allow myself to try. Woo. Okay. So you said a whole lot. There, there are so many like great nuggets and things that I know a lot of people experience who are, you know, working entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. The, the fear is real. Yes, it the, is. The, the fear is real because guess what? You know, I'm getting a paycheck every, you know, month, every two weeks, every week, mm-hmm. whatever, like that mm-hmm. paycheck is real. And then that immediately steps into the fear of like, well, oh my gosh, well, what if I can't take care of myself? Right. <laughs> right. And I had two children. So, <laughs> so even more, you had people depending on you. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all right. Um, and then you said something, you said something else though but I'm going to bet on myself. Mm -hmm. There is something in that confidence because that's confidence, right? Like that's that's confidence and faith like together and knowing that you were called to do something bigger. Yes, yes. So, okay, I know it didn't happen overnight where you were just like, you know, uh, (laughs) girl, I've got this confidence and I can do it. How did you, how did you get there? Cause I'm sure you probably said, I want to, I want to, I want to leap. Mm-hmm, and then when, absolutely. You, I, when you were ready to leap, you probably heard something saying, Mm-mm, girl, don't leap. <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. And for me, it was more, you had this back and forth. You mm-hmm. have this internal conversation all the time. You should do this. No, I can't do that. You should do this. Why I won't succeed in that. And you play with those two conversations. And mm-hmm. for me, it was recognizing what is truth and reality and what is a false belief and a fear. So mm-hmm. once I was able to distinguish what those two were, when I heard the fear, I become, I came to a point where I started questioning those things I was hearing. Why can't I do it? Why would mm-hmm. I be unsuccessful? What's the worst that could happen? All right. If I lose everything, it's Mm. material. I can get it back. If I launch a business and it doesn't work, I can either try it again or I can pivot and do something different. And so for me, with with anything you research, I would delve in instead of quitting a job and diving right into launching a business. I research. Mm -hmm. I research different countries, different different cities, different industries, research how others did it, who was successful, who failed. And I just really dove into understanding the industry I chose, what the mindset of an entrepreneur looked like, what I needed to prep to make that transition. And then it was just like, now or never, what are you going to do? And Mm. even with that, you have that toy of, you really want to do this? You want to leave six figures, X amount of years to do this. And it's like, it's now or never. I can get this back. This six figures industry knowledge that I have isn't going anywhere. But this opportunity, maybe I'll never get that. Maybe I won't be in this mental place to start it. Because I think making that leap is, is literally where you are mentally. 
Do Mm -hmm. you have that mental courage at that time to proceed in whatever adventure you want to proceed in? Mm Because tomorrow it could be different. A month from now, my whole situation could be different. And Mm -hmm. I don't have that same courage or I'm not having that same strength to fight off the fear that I did the month prior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I am hearing a lot about, of, uh, about mindset and that Mm -hmm. you were building, you know, you were building your mindset to be, you know, strong, but also like resilient. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I love the, the positive self-talk that you started to combat, you know, your own, like, you know, mind to maybe say whenever it said, well, well, you can't be successful. Well, why can't I? Right. Because uh, it's amazing when you probably ask yourself that self, you know, those doubts didn't have anything to respond with. Um, Mm -hmm. And I also really like that you positioned yourself to be able to move away from your corporate job. And you mm-hmm. did the you did the work. So you started to research. Um, mm-hmm. You didn't just say, I got an idea, y'all. <laughs> and I'm I'm quitting. <laughs> you think you wanted to. to. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now y'all hear that out there. Anybody about listening and watching. We're not telling you to quit. No, because, no, no, don't do that. Because they driving you crazy. Like we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, don't just quit. <laughs> but listen to Elisa and do the do the hard work, which is the, the preparation. Yes. So with that preparation comes patience. Oof. We still working on that patience, but yes, (laughs) (laughs) lots and lots of patience. (laughs) Right. Because as entrepreneurs, right, you get an idea and Mm -hmm. you're like, you're right. I know if I think we, we talked pre-show about this. Um, you get an idea, you zero to a hundred, like quickly, like ready to go. I mean, yes. <laughs> I mean, like I thought about this, like, I still chuckle about this. Like last year I decided, and I think it was August, end of August that I wanted to do like a one day virtual conference in October. And then I had like, it was in the August. I had like a month to pull it together. And I was like, oh, I can do this. And I just like killed myself <laughs> to do it because I had this idea and I wanted to do it. And it was like, I know I can get it done. I know I can get it done. And I was like, it was actually kind of crazy. Like now that I think back on it. Um, but <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's what people do with like businesses. Like they get oh, yeah. an idea and they're like, if I miss this opportunity, or if 100%. I miss this window for me, what advice can you give to those out there listening um, regarding how you've handled it? Now, I just said I struggle with patience, and that's <laughs> the question you're going to ask. But you said that you have been working, but <laughs> you struggle, but you have been working on it. So that is yes. the thing. That's the nugget for us. Yes. <laughs> So my suggestion would be, and this is something I am still learning, um, is to give your time, to give yourself time to not only think of a fabulous idea, but then sit with it. So what I found is a lot of times I get a thought and I'm just running. And then now on the flip side, I'm like, oh, I should have did that different. I should have gave myself more time. But now when I come up with an idea, I sit with it. And I'm like, does that timing look good? Do I have everything that needs to be done? If I don't make this deadline, what's the next deadline? What's the harm in waiting? And the same thing, I reevaluate that decision. And that sounds good in theory, but sometimes when you're in the midst of a great idea and you want it now, 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 it's hard to rear yourself in and instill patience. And so what I started looking at is, okay, if I launch it now, I could launch a really good business. But if Mm -hmm. I wait and launch it in a year, or I do my research, I do my planning, I make sure all my ducks is row, I can launch a great business. And I think the difference between being patient and impatient is not just timing, but it's also, do you want good or do you want great? And for me, I want great 
and I want longevity. Exactly. See, Mm -hmm. I mean, for someone who struggles with being patient, I mean, you have, you got it. Like you said a whole lot there, because I think it's, it's, it's so important for people to recognize, to like have that good idea and want to go. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you have to, you have to pace yourself because it's like, I still believe that slow and steady wins the race in the end. Absolutely. Um, Because even from my own personal experience with, with go up girl, I mean, I've gone through so many ideas and tried throwing so many things at the wall that did not stick. Mm -hmm. And in the moment, you know, I'm telling myself like, oh yeah, because I can test and learn. I can see, but like in hindsight, it is also like, huh, I could have just waited and just Mm -hmm. uh, came up with a better plan to do that. And I think Mm -hmm. at now in this season, I am doing that. Um, Mm -hmm. As you and I, we just talked about an idea that I have, but it's something, you know, old me would have been like, go girl, go. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. this new, this, you know, more patient version of me is like, you know what, let's just plan and prep. And we're going to do this Q1 of 2023. So it's like, you just have to, you know, you just have to pay. And I think you can do small things that will help you get small wins. And I think Mm -hmm. when you get small wins, you have to definitely celebrate those wins as well. And they all, like you said, they're building up to something greater. And and I think the thing that you said that is so key, it's that it's longevity and that sustainability. Like you want to Mm -hmm. build a company that's sustainable, that will la- has lasting and will last and not something mm-hmm. that will just be fleeting. And, you know, a uh, year later, people are like, wait, what? That was a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think what made me sit and realize the value of planning, preparation and delivering quality over quantity is looking at some of the statistics of entrepreneurs, 40% mm-hmm. of businesses, and my numbers could be slightly off, but 40% of businesses that start do not survive the first year. Mm-hmm. Out of that 40% that do, the out of that uh, percentage that does survive, they don't mm-hmm. make it to five. And 90% of the businesses that launch that haven't made it to five years fail. So for me, it was more get to one year. All right, I made it to one year. Let's get mm-hmm. to five years. Once you hit five years, because that's when people really start to notice that this is a business that's going to be around is mm-hmm. at that year mark. So once I hit five years, it's like, all right, let's get to 10. Once we get to 10, then we can pivot, look back, see if we want to change what our not new direction is. And so now that I'm at 11 years, it's like, oh, let's get to 15. Let's see what happens when we get to 15. Mm-hmm. And now I'm comfortable to say, let's launch an extension of this business. Let's look at some other things that we can start to do because now we have a blueprint. We know Mm -hmm. how to navigate this entrepreneurial dream, this entrepreneurial path, and we know what success looks like. Yes, I think that is so important because a lot of people that plan and, and launch businesses, they don't really have a, a framework, a blueprint, as you said, of what success looks like. Because success isn't just making money. Correct. Success, like you said, is, okay, we're getting to, we got to one year. Now mm-hmm. we're getting to five. And then let's get to fit, you know, let's continue to grow and let's continue to expand our product offering and what we have to bring to to the world. So yes. that's, that's so um, important. So like, I don't know if you, I love watching Shark Tank. Like I do, it, sure. I, it is, it is, I am so like, I get wrapped up in it and I will watch all the um, marathons on CNBC, <laughs> but it's like a lot of those companies. And I'm also the person that can't wait until the end. So like, I'm, I'm always Googling the company to see if they still business. See, that's where the patience is. I don't wait to the end. As soon as the name come up, I want to know what the shark exactly. can do for them. I'm where are they at right now? Exactly. Like I do that every time and I have to hold. So um, my husband, like, I don't say anything to him, but like, I've already looked and then like, we'll watch the end. He's like, 
oh, well, that's too bad. They didn't get a deal. I was like, yeah, and they not in business anymore. <laughs> Because that was a dumb idea. I mean, they could right. even sell. They could even sell that to the sharks. And so I was thinking in my head, like, how did these people get invited to pitch the sharks with this stupid idea? But I guess you got to mm-hmm. have some people. You got to have some people on there that, like, you know, have like sort of ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got to be mm-hmm. entertained. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So why don't you now let's talk about your business. Because it's an exciting, it's an exciting one that um, yes. I definitely want to to learn more about. So tell us all about it. So my new entrepreneur launch is called Sisu Athletics, and what that is that is a celebration of women, their tenacity and grit in a world that still undervalues and underestimates our potential. Mm-hmm. I am build- building a community around apparel. I am. I want to, to not only make every woman look amazing, but also give her permission to live her life without limits. That is our what we stand on. That is what the mission of Sisu Athletics is built on. Now, what we do is we are a body inclusive brand consisting of essential pieces created with technical fabric paired with tailored designs to give the look and feel of a luxury brand, but holds the durability of performance fabric. So that's CCU Athletics in a nutshell. I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, So I have, you know, of course, stalked your Instagram and looked (laughs) at your website and just saw like, you know, some of the photography of some of the pieces. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, wow, like, this is going to be pretty awesome. Um, Because I mean, you want to, you know, especially as women with curves, right, you want Mm -hmm. to find something that you feel good in, something that looks good on you Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. something that is also comfortable. Absolutely. Absolutely. And my business that I'm still operating to own is a boutique fitness studio. So a lot of those clients are what inspired me Mm -hmm. to branch out and do CSU athletics. Cause I'm watching these women that comes from all walks of life, corporate, entrepreneurs, teachers, healthcare, and I'm watching them come in with duffel bag after duffel bag, changing clothes, complaining how things fit and how there's no pockets, there's no stretch. The quality of the fabric is nowhere how it used to be. And then that sparked, oh, well, I can fix that. I'm an entrepreneur. Let me create something. So again, started doing the research learning a whole different industry, a whole different dynamic. And it's a hundred percent sure. A lot of the brands that are out there now, the quality of fabric is garbage at best, but to appreciate the inconsistency of a woman's body, especially today's woman and Mm -hmm. finding something that you can put on and not only does it feel good on your skin, but it fits perfectly and you don't have to change two, three times a day, depending on what your day consists of was missing. Mm -hmm. And so for the past four years now, that's what we've been working on, developing the correct fit, the correct sizing, finding Mm -hmm. the perfect, um, fabric that fits, that stretches, that transition, that wears well, so that when you buy a to piece, you know it's quality, it's well mm-hmm. made, it's going to fit you perfectly, and it's going to transition with you through the day. And you can wear it summer, winter, spring, fall, and know you're going to look good and feel good. I love it. I love it. So what types of pieces are going to be in the collection? So our first capsule collection, you you mentioned you were looking at the website and saw some Mm -hmm. of our pieces. Well, this is where patience comes in because I (laughs) revamped the whole collection. I was just so quick. Let's take some photos. I'm ready because we did a crowdfunding campaign Uh a few months ago. And that was more to test. Do we have something that the masses want? Mm -hmm. And we successfully funded 
$14,000 to help with the production. So hearing some of the feedback, we went in and revamped the whole collection. So what we will be bringing to the market of the course is a blazer. Every mm-hmm. woman needs a nice tailor, well-fit mm-hmm. blazer. We'll be bringing yes. dresses. One will be a reversible. One will be a wrap. A couple different variations of tops. And of course, pant. You need that essential go-to pant that yes. you can wear. Um, but our secret sauce is everything we make will have pockets. Lots love and it. lots yes. of pockets. <laughs> yes. I love pockets. Like I love pockets on like everything. And whenever I get something that doesn't have pockets, it just is so disappointing. It's mm-hmm. like pockets. Yes. Pockets are the best. It's like, why does men clothes have so many pockets? We need pockets too. We got mm-hmm. stuff yeah. that we want to put in there. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> like I <laughs> it's like I don't buy like any like athleisure workout wear like that doesn't have pockets on it. Cause I'm mm-hmm. like, nope, mm-hmm. sorry. Cause when I'm walking, I'm like, I need somewhere to put my phone. I need to put my garage yeah. door opener. Like I need, I need pockets people. So, oh my gosh. And what types of um, like palettes as far as like the colors, um, what's that going to look like? Well, we're still working that out. So nothing's set in stone. So we're trying to, cause again, we want everything to be timeless and mm-hmm. seasonless. So being very meticulous with our color palette, like I'm the type of love the pop color. I love the pop patterns, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I also realize that that's not for everyone. So again, mm-hmm. just doing market research, looking at the trends and making sure that as I am developing this and I am look, being the creative person behind it, that as I am forming a team, that we are collectively building a product that again, last the test of time and mm-hmm. creates longevity in a saturated market. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that. That's a very smart. Mark. Okay. Mm-hmm. So where can, where, when can we expect this first collection and where can people learn more about it? Well, because we working on patients. <laughs> there's a lot of delays in the clothing industry like yeah. things are being held up factories are still backed up and because I'm a newer brand you know there's you got to get in a timeline when you can so fingers crossed it'll be coming this fall uh later on this year hopefully we'll make it before Christmas um if we could do it sooner I'd launch it tomorrow but again <laughs> it's <laughs> it's bringing quality Mm-hmm. And it's making sure that the mission we are standing on is what we actually deliver on. So again, our target right now is later this year, launching it before the Christmas season. But again, the market determines that where all mm-hmm. the slow falls are coming, that determines when we're actually releasing, because I'm not going to, for the sake of getting it out there quick, I'm not going right. to release it sooner than it's required. Mm -hmm. But once we launch, even now people can become an insider where they can stay in the know what we're doing, how we're doing it, when we're releasing exclusive pre-launch things we have that we're working Mm -hmm. on. They can go to Sisu and that's spelled S-I-S-U addicts.com. We're on Facebook's same name, Sisu Athletics, and you can find us on Instagram at Sisu underscore athletics. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So that's very exciting. And you know what? I mean, you're bringing timeless pieces to the marketplace. So, you know, if it's whenever you bring them, I think it's going to be like very, people are going to, women are going to welcome it. And I love yes. this. I love the idea of, you know, it's built on community. And, um, Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, we love, (laughs) we love being a part of community, being Mm -hmm. able to talk and share about our clothing. Um, Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to this launch. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I am too. It's been four years now in the making, and I think we're doing some really, really exciting things. And I'm Mm -hmm. definitely putting a lot of love, blood, sweat, and tears into this, uh, to this brand. (laughs) It will all pay off for you, my friend. Fingers crossed. Fingers yes. Crossed. 
<laughs> All right. So now we're going to go into um, our last segment. Um, well, next to last three things with Alisa. So hmm. I'm going to ask you three questions, but I actually pulled one um, from up top that I'd like for you to answer. So I'm going to start with um, how do you start and end the day? Hmm. Starting in my day with prayer, peace, and stillness. Those are a must. Of it. And how do you end the day? The same prayer, peace, and stillness. For Thank me, you. it is just regardless of what's going on, I need to pray, give thanks. I need to have peace. And while that peace is happening, stillness, just time to just be, to reflect with nothing mm-hmm. happening, nothing going on, no background noise, nothing. Right. Love that. Um, Okay. Outside of launching your collection this year, what's one other goal that you've set for yourself? Hmm. So the funny thing is I've gotten away from setting goals per se. Mm -hmm. And what I do is set intentions. Okay. So my biggest intention for myself this year is to give myself space to review, revise, and think things through before Mm -hmm. jumping the gun. Because in the past, I was like, I get a thought, I'm on it. I'm like, let's do it. How can I launch it? When it's going? But now I give myself that space to say, okay, do I really want to do this? Do I have time? So I set that intention every day to Mm -hmm. allow myself that space to reflect, review, and revise. Like it, like it. So when you're not working, I know you work a lot, but what is one of your favorite things to do when you actually have like some, um, some me time? So my biggest thing is just working out and being active, but outside of that, it's being around good people, good company, and keeping myself in a position to do whatever I want to do during that time when I'm not working. If I want to sleep, I can sleep. If I want to mm-hmm. walk, if I want to be with friends, whatever it is, I want to give myself that space and that environment to do whatever it is I want to do at that time. But if I had to pick one, it would be working out. Okay. I like it. All right. And then here's your bonus question. Um, how do you deal with naysayers? I know like being an entrepreneur, you know, sometimes it's the people we know. <laughs> mm-hmm. how, do you, how do you use those words to, um, how do you use those words to fuel um, you on this journey? So for me, when I hear the naysayers telling me what I cannot do, I'm mm-hmm. like, really? It makes me want to draw them in, listen to why they feel I'm doubtful, and then prove to them that, oh, you're wrong about me. That's my fuel. That's my energy to be able to prove them wrong, but keep Mm -hmm. a smile on my face and still be very classy when I do it. (laughs) And she's like, face cracked. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) Thank you so much for playing along. (laughs) Thank you. It was fun. So now we're going to move into our final segment. So before I let you go, um, again, this was a great discussion. I, oh, I thank you so it. much for the great nuggets that you've shared with us. Um, if you could leave the audience with three takeaways from this discussion um, regarding your entrepreneurial journey, um, what would those be today? Mm. One would, of course, be always bet on yourself. Um, The second would be take your fears with you. They're not going anywhere. So put them in your back pocket and keep it moving forward. And um, the third one is do not conform to what seems easier. The best things in life take time. That is so very true. I love those. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Okay. So. Last, last thing before I let you leave (laughs) is one last time, let everyone know how they can find you online and connect to you. They can go to our website, which is SISU, which is spelled S-I-S-U, athletics.com. You can connect with us on Facebook 
at Sisu Athletics. And then you can also connect with us at IG or Instagram at Sisu underscore athletics. Fantastic. Well, Alisa, thank you so much. Wish you all the success in the world. Cannot wait to, I got to get signed up so I can be an insider so I can know yes. when things are launching. Yes. So I need to get <laughs> in there, but I hope you'll come back again and join us. Absolutely. And tell Absolutely. Us- and I wish, I'm sorry, I wish you great success too. I'm looking so <laughs> forward to seeing where you go and your new adventure. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back. Welcome back to the Globe Girl Podcast. I'm Kyra. Thank you again to Lisa for joining today. What a wonderful conversation. And what about those pockets, ladies? Pockets on everything. Pockets, pockets, pockets. And I also like saying pockets. So, (laughs) but what a great um, collection. Really, really looking forward to supporting her and um, really just, you know, getting that um, great. Everything sounds so great, right? Like having something that is quality, something that fits, something that breathes, something that you feel good in. I mean, like, who doesn't want to sign me up? So make sure you go to her website at sisuathletics.com. You can also find the links in the show notes and sign up to be an insider so that you find out about any pre-sales, find out about her definite launch date. So get on over there now and sign up. Also follow her on Instagram and Facebook um, as well. Again, you can find those in the show notes. Um, If you'd like to learn more about Glow Up Girl, you can visit us at glowupgirl.com. Also, you can check out, you can go there, check out past podcast episodes. You can sign up to be a guest on the show if you like. You can grab our social links there and so much more. And also, if you are listening, first of all, thank you so much for the support. Um, But if you are listening on our platform that you can leave us a rating and review, we would really, really love for you to do that. Um, If you are on YouTube and you're watching us, please subscribe, join this party, become a glow getter with us. (laughs) Anywho, I am going to go now because I am... um, I am starting to ramble, my friends, but I will see you all next week. Until next time, stay focused, fab, and glow up. Take care, everyone.